believe I did. Ranger. There's actually a reason why my wife is videotaping the dogs going crazy in the front yard. Ranger. Grizz. One of the biggest questions we've been, uh, hey, Ranger, coming up with is how to control a dog that is uncontrollable. Usually it's that puppy stage, somewhere around 10 months, where the dog actually starts getting some size and it becomes a little harder to hold the dog down. When it's before 10 months, it's a puppy. You can literally step on the leash, you're fine. Now that they're getting bigger and bigger, they're getting a little difficult to control. So that's what this video is all about. The many, many uses of this $17 snout harness. Uh, whether you're taming a crazy dog for the day, uh, you're going for a walk, 
you don't like them pulling on you. If you have a heartworm dog that you have to control all the time, it's an awesome use for that. We also use these inside the house when we need to, to control that uncontrollable dog. We'll hang an eight, 10 inch leash from it. And anytime we need to, as the dog's walking by or as the dog's jumping on you, you can grab a hold of it and redirect the entire body just with this harness. I love these things. So again, we're working on the uncontrollable dog. I actually kept him in the crate one extra hour today for their nap time to make them a little nuts. And the point of that is to show you how the snout harness absolutely controls even the uncontrolled animal. So we're taking one of the toughest dogs we have and we're putting a snout harness on him. Grizz? Grizz is actually going to be next. And we're putting the dog in total check. Anywhere I want, anything I want him to do. Sit. Sit. Good. As soon as I take it off, he's going to be a nut job again. Guess who's next? Good job, Ranger. Grizz. Grizz. No. Grizz, come. Three times I had to call him for him to come to me. You, you know. Tank, this is going to be fun. He knows what this is. He doesn't like it. He actually just got off the snout harness. He's without a leash. He's correction collar trained now. And he's actually an awesome dog. But during these times when he's first getting up and getting out, he's very uncontrollable. So we've taken the other dumb head and we put the snout harness on him and we're able to control them. We're able to move them. Kapount, drop that stick. Ranger, anywhere we want him to go. He can't go anywhere. If he tries to, if you can get a close up of this, if he tries to go anywhere, pulling back on this turns the head back and away from whatever interests them. So you're not only changing body position, you're changing mind. That's the genius behind the snout harness. A normal snout harness is, when it's being used, is open. Open your mouth, big boy. Come here. They have plenty of room to open their mouth. They have plenty of room to pant. They have plenty of room to drink water. You can probably even feed them treats and such. Uh, however, if this was an aggressive dog and you were walking it and all of a sudden it tried to start biting you or something to that effect, all you'd have to do is lift up and it pinches the entire mouth closed the way it goes through the ring. This particular one actually has a lock that goes all the way down and you can actually turn the snout harness into a muzzle if you had to. He's an awesome sport for letting me do all that to him. Get a real good zoom in on this. If you hold this properly, it goes over the snout, around the back of the head, clip it together, and it's on. I'm purposely putting him in the middle of the fun here so I can show you if he was heading towards danger, how you can turn his head and pull him right back. You can use it as a simple suggestion, just very little weight to it to bring him back to where you're going. Or if he was out and out running for a problem, you can use it harshly and pull him back any direction you need to go. So in addition to me doing a lot of the snout harness work, we've got Wyatt, who's a 
teenager who's also learning how to train dogs and such, we have him learning for the first time how to use a snout harness. Of course, the mistakes he's going to make, the mistakes he has made, are going to be some of the mistakes you're going to make. So we're able to show that to you as well. Cool. Hands back down to the side. You can give him more rope than that. If you can droop it between you and him, that's the best way. I'm off to the side, you go ahead and start spinning around. You don't have to watch him, he knows which way to go. Good. You go ahead and give him a little more rope. Good. That's awesome, Wyatt. Don't be afraid to do a good clip. Speed-wise, walking. Because they like the speed. Correct him when he goes too fast. Good. This is what I want you to do now. Go ahead and hang out right there. Come up a little bit. You're going to stop and you're going to say, sit. Sit. And start off again. All right. Sit. There, sit. You can do it calmer. You don't have to be volume wise. You can do it much calmer, much more relaxed. Good. Let's do it together. And you call it when we're stopping. Uh, here. Fair sit. Hannibal, sit. Fair sit. 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 You can pick up a little on the, the snout with the leash to help him out with it. He knows what he's supposed to do. Give him a little extra lead. Bring yourself a little closer to me. And basically, you're telling him to stay at that point. Now that's how relaxed a dog should be when you're taking them for a walk through the park or something to that. Uh, if you're talking to a friend or your dog should be relaxed, sitting. So if you and I are in a park and we're having a conversation, we should be able to have a conversation without our dogs wanting to attack each other or go after the person we're talking to. A lot of times, believe it or not, when a dog is on a leash, that's the most threatening that dog can be because he is attached to his owner. And if he's attached to his owner, he may feel the need to start to protect. Sit. And it's up to the person who has that dog with him to keep him under control. You're doing a great job with him. He is staying right where he's supposed to. He's listening to you. This is how you control your dog with a snout harness. Now, Wyatt, this is the first time he's ever walked a dog with a snout harness. And uh, have you walked other dogs before, large dogs before? Or is this the first time you're walking dogs? Or? I've walked small dogs. Small dogs, okay, but nothing this big. Nothing that's up to your hip size or anything. This is how you control a larger dog when you're walking uh, to keep them from going after anybody else. Um, it's not a difficult thing. Some dogs are a little tougher than others. We're going to have some other tougher dogs, but uh, let's tell you what, let's take one more shot at it see how we do. So Hannibal here had his first kill shot for his heartworm yesterday. This is a, another very valuable use 
for these snout harnesses. Um, I'm able to fully control even how fast we walk with the snout harness. He can't pull on it again and it's going to turn his head. And anybody who knows anything about heartworm, the very first thing they tell you, the doctors tell you, when you get your pet home is nothing but crate rest. Now I have permission to take Hannibal on a very short walk. He's very impatient. He's normally very athletic, very very active. No, nope. come on up. Come on up. <laughs> come on up, boy. Hannibal, up. And this type of activity is actually not supposed to be happening. So uh, we are allowed to take a short walk. And yes, this snout harness is going to be very, very valuable, especially when we get into the second 30-day period and we're doing this for 60 days straight. He's going to become very impatient, but uh, this is how we're going to control him. Come on, boy. So really, this is the speed that I'm allowed to go. A nice, slow walk. The fear with heartworm is that as the heartworm dies and the pieces are still left in the body, if they're shaken off, they can flow, they can kill the dog. So it really is very low activity, very low heart rate through this entire process. It's a 60 day long process. We only go down about 100 feet and come back and it really is just for morale, just for his brain. He's used to walking these streets with me three, four, five times a day with all the other shepherds. Now I have to do it by himself and just get him out of the cage for a few minutes. But being aside, the snout harness is what allows me to keep total control of this guy. Because if I put this leash on his collar, he'd pull me all over the lawn and probably chuckle about it. Uh, so Ranger here gets more and more riled up, especially when the loose dogs are outside in the living room. They're playing around a little bit. They shouldn't be playing that rough. But they're playing around a little bit. He wants to get out of the cage and run with them. Uh, but we don't just let him out because he would tear the place apart. So one of those things that we use to control him as he starts getting and I can always tell when he's getting a little out of control because he's not listening he's listening now that's good tank come here big boy why don't you go ahead outside remember our snout harness it's an awesome way to control your dog don't feel guilty about using these they work they help you control the dog with less energy and less yelling. All right. Now you have control of your dog. It also humbles the dog. It actually takes his temperament down to a different level. Go ahead. Guys, take it easy out there. And what I'll do is I'll actually put him back in the cage, lay him down, lay him down. Lay him down. Make him stay. The snout harness is taking some of his energy away. It is humbling him. Luca's got to stay in a cage until everybody else inside. No. Inside. Lay down. Guys, take it easy out there. Bear, bear, go ahead outside. In the cage. Lay down. Okay. 
in the cage and lay down. It has sucked a lot of its energy away already. But he is absolutely determined. Yeah. Stay. All right. We got Juno. It's a lot better. It's not a miracle worker. It's going to take time. Patience. Lots of patience. Sit. 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 Ranger, sit. That's how a snout harness works inside the house. That's how you can use it. To keep the craziness from getting any higher out back or out front, 